Hey folks, and welcome back to Fantasy Wannabe. So today we are doing a super early build, a very, very early build of our 2024 fantasy team. Now, I have to give you the caveat that so much is going to change between now and season opener. We're still over 50 days away from that first kickoff. And you know, I know, so many things are going to change between now and then, particularly when it comes to these super low priced rookies. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the philosophies I love to adopt straight off the bat is to have players who are in a starting 13, players who are more likely to get big minutes as opposed to players on the bench or players who aren't even named in a 17. And obviously we're a long way away from knowing that at this point in time, but it's always fun to speculate. It's always fun to do one of these early builds. And it's always good to get something down on paper so that we know where we feel comfortable, where we're happy with, and, and which parts of our game we need to sort of move around and come up with something better the closer we get to season kickoff. Now, with that in mind, let's get into it. All right, so we're looking at one of these beautiful, lovely, empty, clean slates of a, of a fantasy team. You know, I'm just going to probably go from top to bottom. Wouldn't it be nice just to go bang, 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 bang? Actually, let's click autofill and see what happens. Ah, oh, interesting. So we've got Harry Grant, Smith, Lienu, Fainu, Hopgood, Lukey, Hines, Cleary. That's interesting. Bado, Kula, Ponga, Mitchell, Bigi, Bigi. I've pronounced that wrong. It's actually not a bad team. There's actually uh, a couple of players that are going to be in my team that are in this squad. So that's um that's very interesting. But uh, let's clear that out. And let's go with the team that I have selected today. So first up, let's go with the hooker. So Harry Grant gets locked in for me. He's significantly better in that position than I think anyone else. He deserves the spot. I reckon he can be a gun pretty much from day one. I'm hoping he's one of those players with the exception of origin and maybe injuries is a set and forget. So let's go ahead and pencil him in. Now, the other one that I'm sort of tossing up between is Jeremy Marshall King and Brandon Smith. I've unfortunately decided to go with Brandon Smith. I'd rather go with Jeremy Marshall King is the jewel. So hook and mid and 540k. So I'm just going to lock him in as well. He's going to go into that mid position. Next up is our middles. So let's have a look at that. And Payne Haas, he again is, you know, along with Isaiah Yo, significantly better than, than the rest of the field. I'd love to go Payne Haas, Isaiah Yo, Jermaine Hopgood, and a Jack DeBellin. Unfortunately, I don't obviously have the money at this point in time, but we are going to lock in Payne Haas. Next on that list for me is a player who I think will emerge as a Payne Haas kind of player at his new club. And that's uh, Tom Flegler. So let's go and find Flegler. I think he will be the... Um, uh, actually, let's just go and type it in. He will be the focal point, I reckon, at the Dolphins. So let's hate it how it does that. Leggy, there you, there you are, mate. Locked in to my side. Okay, so I think that's pretty decent. Brandon Smith is probably the, the weakest link there. Now, again, I could probably put in a, a Curran uh, or maybe a, a Kikau, um, something like that into that lineup. But I had to kind of choose between uh, Brandon Smith or having no sort of spare hooker or backup hooker and I, I don't like that I think um it's always good to have some degree of cover not essential especially if you've got a reliable player like Harry Grant but that's just sort of my take on it all right so next up we're going to look at an, an some edge players and uh, I'm looking for a bit of value in this position so um not someone I spoke about in my edge video but somebody who's kind of really popped up uh, from a community point of view I've done a little bit more research and I have uh, changed my way of thinking. My only sort of caveat on this guy, and it's Sean Lane, is that uh, the Eels seem pretty stacked. They've got some amazing forwards and uh, I do have a little bit of a concern over minutes and I'm hoping that that's something that um, doesn't really sort of come to fruition and Sean Lane goes on and, and actually achieves some big things. 
But again, let's wait for that team list to um to kind of dictate that. Now, the other one is a guy that I think will be in most people's teams, and that is uh, Josh Curran. So what does he come in at? He's 501k, so he'll be up top of this list. There he is there. So we've put in Josh Curran. So that's kind of our forward pack at this point in time. We've got Harry Grant, Brandon Smith, Payne Haas, Tom Flegler, Sean Lane, and Josh Curran. Um, if Josh Curran can play the um, the lock role and gets near on 60, 70 minutes, he's going to be an absolute gun as well, I think. All right, so next up, we need to move into the halves. And really, it's a decision of two. Do we go with Hines and Cleary? Hines or Cleary? Cleary or Hines? Uh, I reckon if you could get both in and afford both, you'd go with both. Unfortunately, I can only afford one. And at this point in time, I'm going to lock in Cleary. And the other guy look, who I'm, I'm hesitant to lock in, but there's a lot of community support behind him, and that's Jamal Fogarty. Um, I'm locking in him, but I'm going to put the, the asterisks beside him. You know, if there's someone else that pops up that maybe is better value, then I'd consider that. One that uh, may pop up of, of interest is Hutchinson. So where's Hutchinson playing this year? Uh, I had a decent look at him. Uh, Caesar's probably not a bad one as well. But Hutchinson comes in at a relatively decent price. Sullivan's not a bad one. Uh, Schuster we'll talk about in a minute. Um, here you go. Hutchinson at the Bulldogs, 400k. He is likely to be the starting uh, 5.8 or halfback. Probably not the dominant one, but he is likely to be there. So he is somebody that, um, you know, if he's playing 80 minutes, he could be worthwhile as well. So one to watch uh, in terms of that one. All right, so next up, we've got our centers. So for me, here is our first kind of specky, and that is Iro down at the Sharkies. Um, you know, 230K, if he's the starting center and that's all the talk, then uh, he'll, he'll be in everyone's team somewhere. And uh, I just think he's going to skyrocket in value, particularly if he's playing 80 minutes. Even if he settles on a score of 30, 35, uh, starting at 230, that's going to turn him into something like a 500, 450, 500k player pretty damn quickly. Um, the next one is uh, Mariner at the Broncos. Um, I think if he can secure... That, uh, that center spot full-time from Herbie Farnworth, then, um, you know, again, he's at 450 now. I think he's got the potential to get up to 5, 550, maybe even 600, depending on how successful he is in that position. So there you go. That's our centers locked in. So it's starting to shape up pretty well. And the only other position that we've got to worry about at this point is our wing fullback. Now, I'd love to go Ponga, you know, lock in a Mitchell, a Mazu, but again, budget's pretty tight down here. Um, and I'm interested to see kind of how things kind of unfold. Um, Tedesco is another one who could offer a bit of value going into the season. I'd love to throw a Reese Walsh in there, but again, you know, funding is pretty tight at this particular point in time. So we're actually going to go down the list a little bit to a guy who I'm sure will be in most people's teams. And that is Ryan Pappenhausen. So there he is there. He's currently listed as injured, but at 495k, if he's playing 80 minutes, he is likely to almost double that score. Uh, 36 average. I think he could average upwards of, you know, 50 to 60 really, really easily and therefore add a lot of value to our teams. Um, next up is a little bit of speculation. So we're going over to the Gold Coast. And that's with Jaden Campbell. Um, if he, and again, there's, there's rumors here. There's always rumors. But if, if Jaden Campbell can snag the, uh, the wing fullback spot, the fullback spot actually at the, at the Titans, then again, he's somebody who will slot into most people's teams, particularly if he's playing 80 minutes. The question for me, though, is what happens to AJ Brimson? Does he get pushed into the halves? Does he get pushed into the centers? Who really knows? Um, okay, so the next person on our list is... Xavier Savage. So again, rumors, but he is apparently likely to play fullback at the Raiders. And if he does that, you know, again, an 80 minute fullback starting at 350k, 
you'd be stupid not to get him. So I've slotted him into my team. So that's the basic lineup at this point in time. So we're looking at uh, how much have we spent? 7.4 million. Uh, we've got two and a half million to uh, to fill eight spots. So you can imagine some of the, the bench players are likely to start to get a little bit cheaper from here on in. So our first interchange player from the Roosters, Wong, 444k. He's got a lot of upside. There's lots of talk. He'll get an increased role. Let's wait for uh, for Teamless Tuesday to see if he actually, you know, secures a starting spot. I'd be really keen to make sure that he does, though. All right, we spoke about Schuster. Let's get him into the side. Okay, so what I like about Schuster is nothing if he's playing half and everything if he's playing 60, 70 plus minutes as an edge. Just consistently running the ball hard and forward. The occasional offload, maybe a try here or there. We do know he's talented. He does have some skills and at 408k could offer us good value if he gets the minutes and plays hard. So Schuster locked into my team. Plus I do love the edge half flexibility. I did have him for a lot of time penciled into that role Fogarty's got. And if I can move him into the halves, then that might even free up an additional 200k. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. Okay, so next on our bench is Piakura from the Broncos. Now, he is likely to take up that edge role vacated by Kurt Capewell. And at 399k, if he can get a 60 plus minute role, he's only going to increase in value as well. But again, that's TBC. Um, there's rumors that Fletcher Baker could actually come in and take that edge role from Kurt Capewell, and that might push Piakura back to the bench. So again, we just have to wait and see. Uh, next up, and speaking of Baker, uh, I've got him slotted in 360k. Now I may end up only running with one of these guys. Um, Lienyu uh, at the Roosters was another one. Do I go with a Baker or a Lienyu? At this stage, I've gone Baker. But again, it really comes down to who's going to have what role. If Lienyu ends up being the starting lock or something for the Roosters, then he's someone that we'd all seriously have a look at. At this stage, though, I think Baker is the most likely. So I've penciled Baker into that spot. Now, the other ones are probably no surprise to anyone, but KO Weeks uh, and Ethan Strange, and I'll put both of those in there now, are fighting. They're both fighting for that half spot at the Raiders. And if they can secure that half spot, one of them will be an 80 minute player. So therefore you would definitely slot one into your team, particularly starting at that 250, 252K mark. You'd almost be silly not to have them somewhere in your team. The other thing I like about KO Weeks is he does offer that half wing fullback flexibility. All right, next up is a Dragons player, um, which is the feeder here. So... Uh, coming in at 230k, I'm hearing he's likely to maybe secure a uh, a bench spot, which again, like I, I like the starting 13 players, but at 230k for a middle forward who probably will get upwards of maybe 30 minutes in that Dragons team, he could offer a decent amount of value. Now, the final guy in our team is another 230k guy. Again, speculation, but I'm hearing that uh, Chevy Stewart down at the Raiders is also in contention for that fullback spot. And if he secures that over Savage, then, you know, Savage would be punted and Chevy Stewart's there ready to go. So there you go. Look, there's, there's probably a couple of question marks over this team. So number one is there's way too many Raiders. And I think at some point we're going to have to make a decision maybe between Weeks and Strange, depending on which roles they play. And the other question mark is, does Ricky Stewart go with Chevy Stewart over Xavier Savage? Or do we, or does he find a way to get them both in the team? Not 100% sure. All right, now here's what I want from you guys. I want you to absolutely critique and tear the absolute crap out of this team. This is just a first draft penciled in. We're a long way to go. As it says up there in the top right, 56 days from kickoff. And this team is definitely going to change. There's going to be massive changes, I would imagine, as Teamless Tuesday gets locked in. You know, players could get injured during the trials. They could get rested. You know, we've got uh, teams like the, I think it's the Roosters and the Broncos heading over to Vegas. Who knows who goes on that trip and who stays back here in Australia. They may have a, a few fun and games kind of settling out kind of what those final teams look like. Positions will get sorted. You know, KO Weeks may end up being the halfback. Ethan Strange may not even make the 17s. Chevy Stewart may end up being the fullback down at the Raiders. And Xavier Savage is nowhere to be seen. 
Sean Lane may be relegated to the bench. Eero might not even make the, the final 17. Like, we just, we don't know. Pappenhausen may not be ready until, like, week four, and then we need to make a decision around who we bring in. So there's so many variabilities still to play out. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is kind of a first draft. It gets something down on paper for me. I'm already seeing a lot of teams that are pretty similar. So I'd be keen to get your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below. Absolutely roast me. And I can't wait for the feedback. Guys, we are 56 days away from season start. So I don't know about you. I'm super pumped. I can't wait. You know, we all go into a season full of hope. And I hope these guys can do an absolute job for me in 2024. Anyway, guys, look, if you've liked today's video, please remember to hit that like button. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, get involved in the conversation via the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.